Today is a big day. I'll be cutting out the spaces where the hatches will go. One will be here and the other will be over there. If I cut this piece out correctly the first time, then I can use it as part of the hat. So it's good that I made these forms and I'll trace the lines on them now. And here are the hatches so far. The boom will stop here so you can safely sit in the back hatch and enjoy the view. So I've got the combing on for the rear hatch. Still have to do that tomorrow, but still things are going a lot faster than they used to because they're, the tasks are smaller. It used to be 300 of this or 600 of that. There's just two hatches. This is great. So these are handholds to go down into the pilot house with and also braces to strengthen that portion of the roof. Twice in the last two days, once each day, the motor that's inside of here would not shut off. It kept feeding the wire through. The first problem was a very small piece of plastic right there that gets jammed and it stays in the pressed down position. I put a little grease on that. That seems to have solved the problem there. But then today, it wouldn't stop going again. And the only problem was dust. The motor is right down in there. And there was dust all inside of here. I think it gets picked up through here. And it also has a magnet on the motor in there, which collected a bunch of metal. There's the motor right down there. You can sort of see you can sort of see the metal that's still attached to it that gets drawn in by this fan. This is all of the dirt that was inside of the welder. You can see it's all very light pieces that get drawn in easily by that fan. And we're back at business. Here are some of the cleats. I've got a total of six of them. Can always add more, but that's all I'm going to do for now. I've started work on the sliders for the hatches. These are all pieces of Lexan, and the Lexan will slide on itself and keep a nice tight fit. So you can see these welds are going to be raised relative to the deck. In order to compensate that, I just drilled an impression into the Lexan. It's really easy to work with. And then this is the tool that I used. Very simple. Here are the hatches, where they are currently. There's just a piece of Lexan that runs between three pieces of Lexan so that it makes a slot. Right now I only have sheet metal screws holding it onto the hatch. I'll fix that later, make it stronger. And the idea is that this one slides underneath the other one. This one has the same concept, just slides through. So it slides right over the other hatch. 
and these are for adding a back end to it. So this will come down about that far, still has to clear the other hatch to try to make a watertight seal against this backing. I'm not sure what I'll attach on to there, and the reason I'm doing it with bolts is because I want to be able to remove the hatch this way. So I want to be able to take the whole hatch out in case I need to remove it that way for some reason I can't figure out. All these are bolted down so I could just undo them and remove the hatch straight up if I wanted. And these are new as well. So I've got some tow rails here. Really should have done those before because when I work up here it's real nice to have that to back my foot up against and it makes it way safer. Here's a little bridge for the hatch in the back. And then I've made the angles for the rear railing. And here's what it all looks like from the top. Here I'm cutting out the pieces for the mast step. I hung a plumb bob from the ceiling with a magnet. And this turns out to be the center of this box. So if I run the tape measure across, I've already pre-measured where that center mark is, where this one is. I line up right on thread. And then this way as well. So there's a mark, you can't see it, but I line it up. And I'm almost there on that side. So there's where the mark sits. You can see the thread is about a millimeter off. It's good enough. Here's a hole I drilled, which is the point at which I hung the plumb bob to place the step for the mast. According to a document I found online about wooden unstayed masts being used for junk rigs, 250 millimeters is plenty strong enough, so I'm going to make my hole 300 millimeters diameter. And I'm also going to make it square just in case I decide to go with a square mast. Right now I'm planning on a circular, but this gives me the option for later. I really admire wooden boat builders because they have to be so exact. If they make a mistake, then they usually have to start over with a new piece. And here's a good, very small example of how steel is not that way. So here, I cut the line too far. That's about a quarter of an inch. That's not a big deal because when I weld, I'm gonna fill that right in. If you make a mistake like this on wood, you can't fill it back in as easily. The only reason I put this together in three separate pieces was to use up some of the scrap. I'm doing my best to use up as much scrap as I can. So I had this piece that was almost big enough and I just had to fit in some extra triangles which I'll weld in. There were some more comments about the car wondering what it is. It's a 1967 Austin Healey Sprite. I bought it for a dollar, put on every nut and bolt that it's got, modified the body quite a bit, and now I'm in the middle of the finishing work, putting on the Bondo and making it smooth enough to get a final coat of paint on it. So that's it for boat building for this month. I probably won't have a boat building video ready for you next month because I think I'm going to spend about a month out on the Pacific Crest Trail. I'm going to hopefully go from 
Ashland, Oregon, all the way to Cascade Locks, somewhere around here. Last year, I went from Tucson, Arizona, to Flagstaff, Arizona, and in previous years, I've hiked from Campo, which is about here on the border of Mexico, up to Lake Tahoe, and that's as far as I've got on the PCT in California. Probably the next video will be uh, posted on November 1st, there, thereabouts, the first week of November. So until then, have a great month, and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.